Hey there folks, welcome back for day 11 of the 30 Days of Banjo. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I hope you're still working on Cripple Creek and Boil That Cabbage Down. We want those to be as solid as possible before we move on with them. But today I want to talk about roll patterns. Roll patterns are something that's involved in most of what we play, and it's also a great thing to practice to get warmed up or just to expand your technique. So we've already talked about a couple roll patterns, but today let's just go over the five most important roll patterns and some ways to practice them. And we're going to start with the forward roll. We've already talked a little bit about the forward roll, but it's really just thumb, index, middle on any combination of strings. But for now, let's play it on the fifth, third, and first. That'll sound like this. Great, so the forward roll is really useful and really common, but there's kind of a confusing problem with it. It's a three note pattern and that doesn't really fit cleanly into our groupings of two, four, or eight notes that we usually find in a measure. It's not really a problem per se, it just means that you can't evenly loop a forward roll in one measure. You might have to play a slightly different pattern like the forward roll variation that we already have. That said, you can practice it with a metronome and think about it in terms of groupings of two, or four, or eight notes. Just depends how you count it. So I'm not going to play this and count one, two, three, one, two, three. I might count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That might get a little bit confusing because every time you get to one, you're starting on a new finger. But that's okay because that's going to expand your understanding of rhythm and of a phrase across a bar line. So it's a good way to practice it. I would just play that thumb index middle, thumb index middle, but still keep counting one, two, three, four. Or if you want to do it as eighth notes, like we have in some of these pieces, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now, the next roll I want to talk about is pretty much the same roll, just in reverse. That's the forward roll. We call this the backward roll or reverse roll. It's just middle index thumb. Same concept, three notes, but you can count it as four notes if you're willing to go over the bar line and say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Same idea, and you can practice it the same way. What's nice about the rest of the rolls that we look at though is that they fit evenly into one measure and the counting is that much more simple. One of these rolls that we've already looked at is the forward backward roll. So that's again, thumb, index, middle, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle. We've used this in a couple tunes already, but it's a great roll to practice on its own because it's gonna come up in even more situations in future lessons and in the rest of the things that you play. Another roll just like that we've already looked at is the alternating thumb roll. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. We've seen it on a couple of different string sets, but you can practice it however you like, so long as you're practicing it at all. But there is one other roll that we should go over that you're going to see soon, so you might want to focus on it, but you'll see it in a bunch of different places. It's called the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. It's called that because it's used in a tune called Foggy Mountain Breakdown, which hopefully you've heard by now. If not, you should check it out. But here's what's interesting. It's actually not in that tune. The role that's used in that tune is slightly different. We don't really have to go over it, but interestingly enough, colloquially, we just say that's the Foggy Mountain Breakdown role. This role gets used all the time. That other role gets used all the time. But for now, let's just talk about the Foggy Mountain Breakdown role. The role itself is kind of interesting because your thumb is eventually going to go all the way up to the second string. It starts like this. You're going to do index on the second string. Then you're going to do the middle finger on the first string. Then your thumb is going to go all the way up to the second string. Then again, middle finger on the first string. Then you're going to do that four note forward roll pattern that we've done a couple times already. Thumb, index, middle, thumb on fifth, second, first, and back to fifth. All together sounds like this. This can be kind of challenging to do at first because obviously your thumb is doing something it's not used to yet, but if you practice it, it'll come just like all the other patterns we've been working on. And this is a good one to focus on for now because it's technically challenging, so that's good for your overall musicianship, but we're going to use it in a couple lessons, so I would get as comfortable as possible with that role in particular. Now in terms of practicing these, I think I would just put on the metronome and practice them kind of like I suggested with the metronome in the first place, where you're just playing one note per click. That sounds like this. One, two, three, four.
So as always, it's a great idea to start out slow so that you can be confident and know that you're hitting everything exactly the way you want it to, but then you can increase the speed of the metronome and push yourself a little bit. Don't increase it by too much, maybe only five or 10 beats per minute at a time, because then you'll be able to keep up and you'll get used to the new tempo. If you jump up by a higher number, you might try to rush to keep up with it and end up playing with worse timing than you were intending in the first place. You also might tense up your hand and have a problem there. So go slow, increase gradually and you will improve. Now that's gonna be it for this lesson. Hopefully that gives you time to work more on Cripple Creek and boil that cabbage down. And practicing these rolls might turn into a good warm up for you or just something to do when you have a little extra time to practice. Beyond that, your featured banjo player for this lesson is Bela Fleck, someone who you've probably heard of already. Bela is one of the biggest figures in bluegrass banjo and he spent a lot of time studying traditional bluegrass banjo early in his career, but is probably the person that's pushed the envelope the most with the banjo. Every banjo player from him on has been influenced by him in some major way, including a lot of the banjo players that I'm gonna bring up in this series. So I hope you really enjoy the playlist I've put down in the description. And if you don't mind, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. That's a huge thing that you can do to help me make more of these videos. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all for this lesson. I'll see you tomorrow for day 12, 30 Days of Banjo. Bye.